So today, Amina is going to be talking about biodiversity, conservation, and citizen science. And with that, I welcome Amina. Over to you, Amina. Thank you very much, Holly, for this introduction. And uh, also a big thanks to all of you who uh, tuned in tonight. So I'm Amina, and um, I happen to be the presenter tonight. Uh, this event is, is actually based on the uh, common labor of love, so to say, um, carried uh, out um, by me and my husband, Faisal. So Faisal was born and raised on Vassini, and uh, besides time away for education and training, uh, he uh, stayed all his life here. So he was uh, in the bush and in the in the sea since his uh, legs could carry him and he knows the environment like uh, the back of his hand. Uh, myself, a very different story. I moved around a lot. I lived in six countries, um, but I had parents uh, with quite a deep connection to nature. So I kind of picked uh, three stepping stones in my relationship uh, with uh, the natural world. So my mother gave me a small piece of land and, and some seeds when I was about 10, it was indeed very important. And the second one, when I was 13, 14, I was allowed to herd cows and lead horseback excursions during school breaks. And third, now this is about two decades ago, I was living in South Africa's Eastern Cape at that time. And I started to work with uh, Lloyd Edwards at uh, Reggae Charters, first as a multilingual uh, marine uh, guide and uh, later as a captain for uh, whale watching and marine conservation uh, within Algoa Bay. So now whales are incredibly captivating animals, uh, very good ambassadors too. And in case you missed Lloyd's uh, event here a few, a few weeks back, I really re recommend his presentation on the Southern humpback whale migration uh, available on the LCA's channel. Um, well, of course, another of my stepping stones was arriving here on the island about uh, 13 years ago, but uh, Look, our approach to conservation will become uh, quite clear during um, this presentation. We have maybe a more emotional and spiritual approach to nature. Neither of us studied natural science. And uh, well, learning about nature is of course uh, a continuous process. So um, I would say, uh, let's better get going and head towards the island. So now here on the right is more the, the map for the seafarers. We see the East African coast with the uh, uh, islands uh, along it, um, with the port cities of Malindi, Mombasa and Dar es Salaam as uh, orientation points. So the red arrow shows uh, the location of Vassini Island. Um, the Tanzanian border is uh, very close by. Pemba is uh, next to us. And uh, the closest city is Mombasa. So we zoomed uh, here on the left, Kenya's south coast uh, in, starting in the north with Mombasa, going down this uh, street marked in blue uh, down to Shimoni. So Shimoni is uh, the last settlement uh, on the mainland. And I also added a little star. Uh, from there, northwest, another 140 kilometer is uh, Kenya's uh, largest national park. And uh, as Kruger was uh, mentioned several times uh, in the beginning, uh, so Tsavo uh, is about a quarter smaller than uh, Kruger National Park. So when we look down here to the blue arrow, we see just 
Vassini Island uh, horizontally uh, lying uh, under the Shimoni uh, Peninsula. So on the next slide, <clears throat> uh, you see all this marine area you see here, um, and actually stretching even uh, longer along the coast, uh, to the left, but also uh, direction north. Um, this all is uh, Ima, an Ima area, so important marine mammal area. Uh, it's called um, Kisite Shimoni Ima, with a total surface of more than staggering 720 kilometers. So, this area is designated for its resident population of Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins, the endangered Indo-Ocean uh, humpback dolphin, and the spinner dolphins. Plus, uh, between July and October, it is a carving and a nursing ground for humpback whales. Now, further down in the darker square, you see um, Kenya's undoubtedly most amazing marine national park, Kisitu Punguti Marine National Park, gazetted in uh, 78. Uh, so shortly before Chris came visiting, <laughs> and uh, it has a surface of uh, 39 square kilometer. So, uh, Besides the already mentioned uh, cetaceans, uh, there is a huge coral reef with a bounty of colorful reef fishes. Uh, we also have sea turtles there. And um, at least if you go with an experienced snorkeling guide, you have very good chances to spot the endangered green turtle or even the hawksbill turtle. Hawksbill turtle, they are critically endangered. Mind you, critically endangered is the last category uh, before extinct in the wild. And in 21, uh, the park gained also blue park status in uh, recognition of its outstanding marine protection. Then uh, you see here north of Vassini Island, we see the Vassini Shimoni Channel. Now these waters are speckled uh, with coral structures and uh, they are two community marine conservation areas along uh, the island shores. Uh, one in the vicinity of uh, the village of Fassini uh, that is near our area and the other uh, near the village of Mquiro. Um, yeah, you see it here on the map on the eastern end uh, of the island. Uh, and in both of them, coral restoration and aquaculture is uh, practiced. So if you're interested to get more uh, into details on, on, on uh, coral restoration, uh, we will also share the links to two interesting docos. Yeah, but now we have some visual uh, how, to, uh, how we arrive uh, on the island. So we start off in Shimoni, we are on the old jetty. We see here uh, some Galawa, um, uh, some traditional Arab Daos. Here we see in the backdrop, um, the village of Nquiro, and here the Baobab forest, uh, very beautiful. <clears throat> oh, here we see, uh, a large uh, traditional cargo DAO, uh, they still uh, go from here to Pemba and Zanzibar and back. Now that was a water boat. Here we see the area, uh, blue monkey area, then comes the village of Vassini. Yeah, and here we are already at the western end of the channel and back to Chimoni. But uh, this is the scene everybody uh, will experience uh, before arriving uh, on the island. Here's a floating jetty that's relatively new for tourism. <clears throat> so yeah, what we do shortly, we own and operate eco cottages on uh, Vassini, uh, sorry, on Faisal's ancestral land. 
And uh, this whole area is called Blue Monkey Area. Um, about a third is somehow used by the Eco Resort. Um, another third is much uh, less frequented. And we do some uh, reforestation with indigenous hardwood trees. And uh, your, the remaining third is hardly ever accessed. We, we just leave it in peace. Uh, the island's groundwater is salty, so we all depend on rainwater and uh, we are neither connected to the power grid. So all this lends itself to finding good alternatives and, and sustainable solutions. And uh, this is what our holiday guests experience uh, together with the untouched uh, white nature we, we have here. And uh, Faisal chairs the Blue Whale Boat Operators. Uh, these are boat owners and crews uh, practicing um, ethical sea safaris uh, in uh, these traditional Arab dhows. So these wooden uh, sailing boats nowadays equipped with uh, an auxiliary engine. So here the emphasis on, uh, is on sustainable sea life excursions, mostly uh, for, for private groups. Yeah, we do marine and terrestrial nature excursion. Myself, I'm a member of the Kenya Professional Safari Guide Association. Uh, some conservation advocacy, uh, mainly things here in the area. And we are very uh, fervent citizen scientists and we use the application iNaturalist. And uh, we will go more in detail later uh, in the presentation. Yeah. So we want to take you on an island excursion. Uh, we heard here the African paradise flycatcher. Um, but we wanted to start with the northern shores of the channel. Um, let's go. So yeah, here you see uh, the northern shores. Uh, you see the coral cliffs uh, we have here, about three meter high. Now, obviously we had to catch the low tide to make this beach walk together. So uh, these rocks um, team with wildlife. Um, we have here an antiquity uh, striped uh, periwinkle. And we also have a speckled mabuya here. And uh, when you uh, look on the text block, uh, we have here also in brackets, uh, Trachylepis maculilabris. Uh, so that is the scientific name. Uh, this can help uh, to understand where in the tree of life uh, uh, this animal belongs. Uh, so, in this presentation, we, we uh, stay in the phylum, uh, in the kingdom Animalia. So uh, all animals <clears throat> in the zoological taxonomy are uh, categorized uh, kingdom, phylum, um, class, order, I'm completely confused, family and down to uh, genus and species level. So um, when we enter a new phylum, uh, we mark it uh, in uh, purple. So uh, in this example here, we have uh, the first species uh, of this phylum, uh, Mollusca. And yeah, the speckle clipped Mabuya is an example for the phylum Cordata. <clears throat> Yeah, so we are still on the on the cliff. Uh, we proceed slowly. We want to see everything. And uh, here's a common sandpiper resting. And uh, now just below uh, the high water line, we have an African hermit spider. Uh, this is quite a, a, a big spider. Uh, they are known to make very strong nets. Um, they are some of the few spiders who actually also uh, prey on vertebrates. 
Now, this spider, uh, we have met her uh, already uh, during two seasons uh, at exactly this spot with XX. So she seems to like this spot very much. And now with a mottled lightfoot crab, we, we just uh, arrived in the, in the middle tide zone, very close to the cliffs still. So this is a shore crab. Um, you will never find it in deep water. And uh, yeah, we are probably one of the few places where you can meet uh, Eastern striped bellied sand snakes on the beach. Now, this is a completely terrestrial snake. Um, we, we meet them sometimes uh, directly at the cliffs in the intertidal zone. We, we, we couldn't find out what they actually uh, hunt down there. Oh, uh, snakes, um, uh, they are generally very shy and, and um, once they spot you, they speed off. So it's quite difficult to, to really get to know these, these animals. <clears throat> yeah, now we are a bit uh, further uh, direction water in the uh, low tide zone where there are still puddles of water and uh, see a varicose ward slug. Um, very beautiful. Uh, we have many ward slugs uh, in the uh, in the channel, so uh, some of them like uh, the deeper water. Uh, but this one we were lucky enough uh, to spot uh, uh, on a beach walk. Uh, the same with this common egg cowry we see in the left corner. Uh, this is quite a big cowry, I would say seven centimeter. And a very nice milky color and uh, with a beautiful mantle uh, pulled pulled over the shell a dark a dark black and with with yellow uh, uh, spots uh, yeah it looks like a beautiful African night sky and uh, we also meet a croquette spider shell a very common shell here and uh, these shells are quite uh, funny to watch. Uh, I have a little clip here. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so they have a very strong muscle. They can extend, uh, extend far out, uh, out of the aperture. Here you actually see the operculum sticking to it, this black spot. Now uh, it's stretching ha hard. So uh, with this, uh, the, the, this conch uh, can uh, actually uh, turn itself over. Uh, well, not very successful here in this example, but they can move. And uh, yeah, there is also uh, the op operculum uh, attached to uh, uh, this foot and um, the shell can, uh, like this, completely close off um, the aperture and, and stay for many hours uh, outside of the salt water uh, without uh, uh, any issues. <clears throat> yeah, the great egret, uh, quite a huge bird. Uh, a beautiful shorebird to see. So Faisal said, uh, uh, this must be a juvenile eel uh, he's preying on. Uh, we don't see them very often here on the northern shores. Uh, we meet them more uh, in the south where this, the, uh, the conditions of the intertidal zones is, is different. So they seem to prefer the, the more sandy area. And uh, what we'll definitely meet is a small giant clam. Now here you see uh, in red NT, that stands for near threatened. So that is the category uh, given by the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Um, <clears throat> So uh, they are very beautiful. They come uh, in this blue you see here. 
but also in green, uh, brown, uh, yellow, uh, or orange. Uh, they can grow quite big, uh, 30 to 40 centimeter. Now they are poisonous, uh, so must be uh, the problems with water quality uh, that they are near threatened. Um, nobody definitely is harvesting them. So at least here we, we have them quite plentiful. And uh, yeah, the red knob sea star, I guess that's the uh, most well-known sea star because it's bright red. And uh, yeah, here we see a juvenile uh, looking completely different. So uh, when they are small, they are just uh, this uh, drab gray uh, and this light green stripes. Um, quite amazing uh, what, a, what a color chain, change uh, happens during uh, their development. So uh, this is the parasitic Jäger, uh, very, very uh, rare uh, sighting here. These are large birds uh, and they actually breed in the Arctic tundra. They're also called Arctic skua elsewhere. So these are migratory birds. And uh, yeah, once they leave their, their breeding uh, grounds, they are far up north, very far from here. They usually spend their life exclusively over the, over the, the oceans. And um, they, they hunt and, and harass uh, um, others, uh, other bird species and, and take them uh, their, their food away. That's why they're called parasitic and well, the name Jäger translates uh, to hunter. So that was an exceptional rare, uh, rare sighting. What we regularly see uh, is the sea uh, anemone. Uh, anemone. Um, uh, don't uh, uh, be misled uh, by, by its common name. Uh, we are still in the kingdom Animalia and actually here in the Snidaria the phylum snidaria so the, this is together with the um, corals <clears throat> so um, they are in a some symbiotic mutualism with uh, the clownfish and uh, i wanted uh, to also um, <clears throat> show you this golden sandfish uh, one of the many uh, sea cucumber species we have here uh, either in the shallow or in the deep water, uh, but this one is actually endangered. So only uh, two steps away from being uh, extinct in the wild. So they have been uh, over harvested unsustainably in the past uh, along uh, the south coast. Uh, they are Asian consumers um, uh, who wanted to have them. Uh, but um, uh, this isn't uh, this isn't done anymore, and uh, yeah, we hope that the stocks can recover. We really still see them uh, uh, rarely. <clears throat> yeah, here we have the first sponge, Phylum porifera, uh, one of my top favorites uh, sightings. Um, uh, on a beach walk, obviously, I know exactly where where they live. Uh, they are sessile, uh, huge, huge um, barrels, um, knee high easily. I would say diameter up to sixty centimeter, and uh, that is a very firm material, so not spongy. It's very hard. I mean. Uh, it's difficult to imagine uh, what a strength they must have. We have partly very strong swells here, and and they uh, survive uh, uh, survive this uh, without problem. Your yeah, amazing animal, right? Uh, then I wanted to show you Acropora digitifera. So you see here now, I use the scientific name because there is no common name. Um, it's also uh, near threatened, uh, this finger coral. Um, we see it uh, uh, quite abundantly uh, in this area here. 
and uh, that's a Haddon's uh, anemone. A beautiful uh, green color as this example here. They exist also uh, more in drab colors, gray, gray, brown, but also uh, with a tint of blue. Uh, also very beautiful and um, definitely uh, visible on any beach walk here. Um, and here is a minor harp. So one of the harp snails. Uh, look how beautiful this shell is. Uh, obviously, um, this is very sought after by shell collectors. So that's uh, we are very happy to see it alive. And uh, here I also have a little footage for you. <clears throat> yeah, so this is a predatory uh, carnivorous uh, snail. Um, you see, they, are, they have a little siphon, it was not uh, nicely visible on this uh, uh, video, so they, they uh, inhale uh, or pull in water through the siphon and, and also uh, pull it out, uh, push it out through it. And they have a chemo, a chemosensory, uh, uh, chemosensors, let's say, uh, in this uh, siphon and uh, they uh, taste or, or smell uh, in this uh, in this way their prey which is often uh, little crabs uh, which they then cover with their uh, kind of toxic mucus and, and more or less uh, paralyze them uh, so that they can eat them amazing animals yeah the shorebirds uh, uh, cannot cannot miss. Uh, that's a sooty gull, a very common bird around here. Now, what is not common, very rare to spot on a beach walk, is this blue tang. Now, that is a, a reef-associated uh, uh, fish, which is usually in deeper water. So uh, there must have been a strong swell, and it got caught up in, in a puddle. A beautiful bright uh, color, uh, black uh, symmetrical uh, design on the side and, and bright yellow uh, fins. Um, that is a rare sighting and, and very beautiful fish. Now, uh, the frog fish we have here is definitely not uh, one of the beautiful fish fishes, but uh, in the beginning, I, I actually thought now this this fish uh, has some parasites or is damaged, uh, but a marine biologist uh, confirmed that is uh, how they can look. Um, and uh, they also have uh, these weird legs with, with real claws, if you can uh, spot it on this photo. So they can really uh, move frog-like. Yeah, that's where they got their name from usually also uh, found in deeper water, so also a lucky sighting I wanted to share. Now here we have a striped eel catfish. Now that's actually the only photo which is not ours, so that was uh, uh, given to us by, by Ebert Knuster, the marine uh, scientist uh, who is often active around here in uh, coral restoration. So he gave me this uh, photo because I saw the juveniles in uh, this intertidal zone and I have a little clip. Now you see uh, how they densely shoal these tiny fish and like this, uh, they create a, a shape of, of a big fish. Now, this is an anti-predator uh, strategy, a very successful. They look like a huge, uh, like a huge fish. Huh? Yeah. Very interesting sighting. Oh, now. Oh. We had uh, the, the favorites of, uh, of everyone, the Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins. So we might meet them on a beach walk. Uh, of course, it's not a daily thing, uh, but uh, they uh, quite often uh, uh, cruise through the channel. Uh, here you see uh, I'm, I'm swimming with one. Uh, of course, amazing, amazing to meet them.
And uh, of course, we also wanted to show you a humpback whale. And then we, sh we chose this, uh, this photo because you see uh, nicely how, how close uh, to the shore uh, this whale, uh, whale is with the village of Asini here in the, in the backdrop. Um, uh, we have another, another photo obviously also uh, now taken from a boat uh, with a, a breaching uh, humpback. Here in the backdrop, we have the blue monkey area, uh, which we will visit now. Uh, and you see here is uh, uh, Faisal's uh, smallest uh, boat uh, from his fleet um, called Blue Whale. So this uh, uh, we use for, for smaller private groups. Yeah. We leave the we leave the beach, climb up again. Um, we are up on land, and now uh, we make a, a short walk uh, through the environment to our bush. <laughs> So you see how uh, uh, the flora is uh, dense bush vegetation, uh, bush or, or uh, small to middle sized trees. Uh, it's also a winding, winding path. Uh, there is no cement around here. We, we didn't put any lights, uh, not to disturb the nocturnal animals uh, living around here. And now uh, we uh, already uh, move uh, towards uh, the coast again. So for your orientation, um, down, down there, we have been walking uh, right now. We see it, yes, there we see the beach and uh, the open sea in the background. So we're just parallel now uh, to the hike we, uh, we did before. Yeah, start with a bang now. Uh, that is the Eastern Forest Cobra. Um, they like uh, this area where we start our hike. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I also have a nice footage from a different location, uh, but it's not easy to film them. So uh, bear with me. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so that's just a storage place uh, nearby. And you see, this is quite a thick snake. Uh, I actually uh, uh, noticed it because uh, the sunbirds were making a terrible noise and I was actually first looking in the in the bushes where is the the snake maybe and and then I saw this uh, this nice sized uh, forest cobra I'm very happy uh, to see uh, it in this size so of course uh, we are a bit zoomed in I had a safe distance of about three meter uh, she's moving um, relaxed, uh, looking for uh, uh, the best uh, opportunity to, to go away from me. Um, when I see photos of, of these cobras, often uh, you see them mm, uh, reared up uh, with a big hood. Um, uh, I think this is, um, they have been like uh, pestered uh, to make a nice photo opportunity. Uh, we meet them a lot. And in all this time, we just have seen it once that they spread up the hood because they were encircled by, uh, by cats. And even this ended well uh, for all concerned. So um, I see them as uh, uh, non-aggressive uh, uh, animals. Uh, they are considered dangerous, they're venomous, so one should be careful, but uh, it's not that they are attacking you or something like that. Now here, now something of a very different size, tiny, absolutely lovely, I go nuts about those. You have to be very careful and really look in the, uh, in the bushes and in the uh, flowers and herbs around. Um, this weevil, uh, is uh, just a centimeter uh, large. Uh, look at this uh, trunk uh, trunk nose uh, it has. Um, you're absolutely 
cute, uh, cute and stunning. Uh, I really love the, the weevils. Then I wanted to show you a Hylus uh, agarotoxus. Uh, so that is a, a jumping spider. That is the biggest um, <clears throat> taxonomic uh, family uh, of spiders with 5,000 species worldwide. Uh, so <clears throat> East African spiders are not um, very well uh, researched and uh, it's difficult to, uh, to get uh, spiders ID, uh, especially uh, these tiny uh, jumping spiders. Uh, but this one uh, is, is well known because it also has a wide distribution. So that uh, exists also in, in West, uh, West and so uh, Southern Africa. Now you see uh, here, uh, so these are hunters. They don't sit in a web. Um, that's why you see it there with the moth. Mm, the Eastern purple, no, it's, it's fine. We just go on. The Eastern purple banded sunbird, uh, a very beautiful bird, um, quite abundant in, in, in the right seasons here. Uh, but I heard from other birders along the coast uh, that they are really rarely uh, spotted nowadays. And people uh, mostly believe that it's because of the invasive um, alien uh, Indian house crow, which uh, uh, invaded, you can say, uh, the, the, the Canyon coast uh, for a long time now and is even moving uh, uh, land inwards. Uh, but Vassini still uh, is free of uh, um, the house crows. The people don't know, is it because we have, um, really uh, uh, hardly any uh, uh, non-indigenous uh, or alien tree. Um, and we have a lot of uh, uh, raptors here. We have uh, different kind of kites. Uh, we have the little sparrow hawk. We have, of course, fish eagle. Uh, we have the harrier hawk. We have a uh, uh, palm nut vulture. So maybe all this plays a role. And uh, sorry, another jumping spider. This is now Tyena inflata. Um, uh, so as they are so small, these jumping spiders, uh, their behavior is difficult to show uh, in the field, but I was lucky to uh, spot one uh, on a terrace. Um, so that is the Adanson house jumper. And you see how it's jumping? Yeah, and then uh, you see the, the movement of, of the pedipalps. So these are the, the white appendages. So uh, there are different hypotheses uh, how, why they are doing this, uh, but definitely uh, there are sensory uh, organs in these pedipalps. And uh, personally, I see it like uh, the, the, the flicking of the tongue uh, snakes uh, do to, uh, to scan the environment. And the Nile monitor, uh, we cannot miss this. Um, yeah, I think it's called water, water monitor in South Africa. Your amazing animals, uh, they grow up to two meters here. Uh, they like to have a drink. And uh, when it's hot, uh, well, they are cold blooded, so they cannot uh, uh, regulate themselves the temperature they like to 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 even lie uh, and take a bath uh, in this uh, 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 bird bath let's say <laughs> uh, they are ferocious uh, animals uh, they actually uh, when they fight uh, they use this long tail that is very hard has a very hard uh, uh, tip let's say or uh, yeah, on top of the tail, all this is very hard and they, they smack it. It actually makes a, makes a loud noise. So I wouldn't recommend to anyone who doesn't know exactly what he's doing to try to catch such a, uh, such a, a lizard. Huh?
Yeah, what a beautiful sound the Dider Kuku. Um, so uh, we 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 really see them uh, rarely here. Um, I uh, I heard uh, uh, they are uh, seasonal um, migratory birds following rains. Now we have uh, very uh, little rain uh, because they are also known, uh, of course, to be brood parasites. Uh, they lay one egg, uh, prefer uh, preferably in a weaver uh, nest. Now we have the spectacled uh, weavers uh, nesting here. Uh, but um, I doubt um, the cuckoo is, is like uh, uh, using their nest. Uh, we see them really uh, rarely. It's a pity. Oh, look what a beautiful bird with this green uh, sheen. Yeah, it's uh, always a nice, uh, nice thing to hear it. And, and then, of course, you, you crawl in the bushes to find it. I also wanted to show you the uh, viola land hermit crab. Um, we find them always near uh, near the shore. Let's say they need water and land uh, uh, to survive. Uh, here we see it in a giant mangrove whelk. Uh, so they also molt and. Uh, yeah, during their lifetime, they, they have to change uh, housing, uh, meaning shells uh, several times. And now something very small, uh, that is the big warm moth. Now that whole thing is maybe a centimeter, or one and a half centimeter uh, large. Um, so you have to be very slowly uh, to, to spot it. Um, <clears throat> So this is actually a cocoon uh, with uh, debris uh, uh, on top uh, as a camouflage. And of course, uh, there are different genera in this family of backworm moth. And um, they have different styles, uh, how they, <clears throat> how they uh, adjust this debris. Uh, some have bigger pieces, other make it very exact. Uh, Exactly uh, spiraling. <clears throat> so uh, from the from the way they uh, um, adjust the debris on the cocoon, uh, you can say uh, what uh, genus that is. I just wanted to also show you how the worm inside looks like. I have a little footage there. Oh, there is the uh, the worm visible. When you see, I actually cheated. That is a slightly different uh, bagworm uh, genus uh, because this one is very. Uh, the all all pieces are very exactly uh, have the same length. Yeah, here again something very small. Only the slow observer will will find it. Look at the symmetrical um, design of these eggs. Uh, so these are eggs from either a stink bug or a shield bug. <clears throat> they have beautiful sheen. Uh, some are silvery and, and some are really dark black. So I asked an entomologist why, why that is. And uh, I was uh, told that they are, some of them are parasitized. So uh, that's why they have different colors. And um, on our walk, we can also meet one, uh, they are their possible parents. Uh, so we have here a shield bug uh, along our track, a variegated coffee bug that we see here uh, just feeding on a, on a flower. And now a, a very small uh, butterfly, or uh, maybe two centimeter. Uh, you see here the hair streaks, uh, they all have a uh, false eye uh, on the hind wings and uh, the little tails hanging out and that has a, a, a purpose. And I have a little footage demonstrating this. Yeah, we'll address this photo later. So here you see how it's uh, moving uh, the 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 tails 
and uh, uh, the hindwings constantly. So you 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 just concentrate on on this part. Uh, any predator will also do that. And of course, uh, the most important thing is to uh, keep your head <laughs> on your shoulders. And uh, uh, with the photo, uh, uh, the following photo, we see also how successful uh, the butterfly is uh, with this uh, uh, deterrence. Uh, so here you see uh, the predator uh, got focused on this moving part of the butterfly and bit off this part of the hind wing. Well, maybe not uh, the, the, the very nicest thing to happen to a butterfly, but uh, it can still on uh, still go on with its uh, with its life without a problem. Yeah, here we have uh, an African leopard, a beautiful butterfly. Um, uh, bright orange, brown, um, very frequent butterfly seasonally here. And uh, on the ground, we have a woodland dwarf toad. Uh, so woodland dwarf toads, uh, like uh, the name implies, are tiny creatures, not larger than two centimeter. Uh, they need fresh water only uh, um, to uh, yeah, for the for the tadpoles um, uh, for the for the reproduction and the tadpole stage, and later in life, uh, they um, can just dig themselves in in cool uh, mud uh, in shady places. Uh, they manage to survive in in our environment, which is actually quite dry. Uh, obviously, best chances to spot them uh, is uh, around the rainy season. <clears throat> now here uh, uh, is uh, the blue monkey, uh, also called gentle monkey around here in, in South Africa. Uh, it's the Samango mon monkey. I like this photo very much because the monkey jumped uh, on this bush and the orange dots here, yeah, these are the butterfly we saw here uh, zoomed in on the left side these African leopards, uh, all flying up in a in a big uh, big cloud, and uh, yeah, we are all just watching uh, uh, these butterflies uh, fly away. So um, meanwhile, uh, we also learned more. We also know meanwhile the subspecies. Uh, of uh, uh, these uh, blue monkeys here. And uh, uh, so the subspecies, Sacopithecus mitis albugularis, uh, that's the one we have here. Uh, they are called Zanzibar Sykes monkey. They are known only uh, along the um, East African coast, Tanzania and Kenya, the islands. And then in certain pockets, a bit uh, inland, uh, it's, it's of course a forest, a forest, a, a arboreal monkey. We have it even two times in the scientific name, Mitis and Albucularis. I have also a little um, footage uh, in a different location where we can see uh, uh, this monkey's uh, feeding. There must be also a troop nearby. Yeah, this 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 screeching sound that uh, these are uh, uh, the screeching sound is the mother or the children communicating, and this loud woof uh, that is the male. Uh, I think uh, it is like marking uh, the territory. Oh, my favorite antelope, the bush tiger. Um, usually a very shy animals. Uh, I also don't know how many we actually still have on the island, uh, but here we were lucky uh, to be able to take a photo of this one. It was just a relaxed uh, 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 antelope, this one. Um, wasn't very much bothered uh, by us. A very rare occasion. Usually, you, we just hear them 
uh, speeding off, of course, a very uh, uh, distinct uh, sound. So uh, this was a very nice occasion to to be able to to observe them uh, feeding, usually uh, early in the morning and uh, in the early evening. Uh, we meet them. <laughs> I just have to laugh when I when I hear these guys. So the beautiful silvery cheeked hornbills. Uh, they are visitors here from time to time. Uh, they don't really reside in our area. Uh, but when you're lucky, we can see them from our trek. Uh, then at the end of the walk uh, on uh, the big uh, pot mahogany tree, of course they are they are heavy. Uh, they need a decent tree uh, to roost on. Yeah, it's also the only species uh, uh, of hornbills we have here on the island. Uh, on the on the mainland, uh, um, there are, there are some more, but here on the island we just see the silvery cheek. Now another we will uh, uh, again just. Uh, below two centimeters, uh, maybe one and a half. I mean, uh, it's a different genus here. This is a lily weevil. Now look, to me, it just looks like uh, this one just dropped out of dinosaur heaven. Okay, look, these spikes. I can't get enough of these, <laughs> of these guys. And uh, they also uh, display a thanatosis. So this is feigning death. Uh, and they're very convincing and they uh, they uh, stick to it for a long time, so <laughs> they tricked us uh, already several times. Mm, and my um, my favorite uh, snake, uh, let's say what what the looks concern, a very, very beautiful uh, Uzambara vine snake. So the genus uh, Telotornis or the wine or twig snakes, they, they, they are widely spread. They exist uh, um, also in South Africa and uh, in, in Central Africa, uh, at least. Uh, but this species, uh, Uzambaricus, uh, is, uh, has a restricted um, distribution range. Uh, that's why it's uh, also classified as vulnerable. A beautiful snake, so it's a bright green, green, yellowish green, and and white on the head. But the rest of the snake really looks like a twig. Uh, it's gray, mottled. Uh, it's, if you don't see the head, it's very, very difficult uh, to spot these snake. Snakes. Uh, they have a red, uh, bright red tongue, um, flicking out sometimes to scan the environment. Uh, very beautiful, also venomous. <laughs> um, and then uh, you see I have a slight inclination towards butterfly. Uh, the coastal swirtail, uh, also with a uh, not so not so large uh, distribution area. Beautiful seasonal butterfly uh, with a long, uh, very long tail. Um, it's always a pleasure to see it. Oh, and another a quite rare bird here, uh, the African pygmy kingfisher. Such a beautiful bird. Uh, so we have uh, mainly the, uh, the mangrove kingfisher here. Uh, sometimes also the pied kingfisher. Yeah, and, and this one. <clears throat> Yeah, the Tanzanian brown-headed parrots, uh, you can't find them anywhere else uh, in Kenya. So we seem to be the northernmost uh, uh, distribution uh, of these of this subspecies. They're very shy birds. Uh, they um, nest in, in, in tree hollows, so they, they, they like the, the baobabs uh, for this purpose. 
And you remember uh, the clip uh, when we arrived uh, from Shimoni, we saw this baobab forest. That is a quite a remote uh, place without movement uh, of, of people usually. So they, uh, they can always be found there. Uh, in our um, in our area here, we must be lucky to see them. Uh, that's mainly at the time when uh, certain uh, uh, trees have fruits here. Uh, they can't resist to come and harvest them. Uh, otherwise, we hear them, the shrieking uh, sound uh, when they fly over. And uh, the flap-necked uh, chameleon uh, crosses also our path once in a while. Uh, the only chameleon species uh, we hear, uh, have here on the island. And I wanted to show you another spider uh, because uh, this is a very different family. Uh, the funnel web wolf spider. Um, so they uh, um, spend their time in, in their nets, uh, in their webs, uh, which has a funnel uh, where they can retreat. And uh, they more or less um, wait until something uh, gets uh, entangled or touches their web and, and then they come forward. And I have a little clip uh, demonstrating uh, what I mean. So there it's sitting. Ah, the footage is not very clear but they, 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 they just then jump uh, to, catch, uh, to catch and kill whatever touched their, their net. So here uh, our, our um, one minute walk ends. So all the preceding photos were uh, taken uh, from this track we hiked. Uh, obviously over time, right? And by looking very carefully uh, what is left and right and uh, above for that matter. Uh, sometimes we also just uh, sit down in the shade of uh, bushes and animals will show up. Now, uh, we just wanted to show you a few more uh, interesting species uh, we spot here in the blue monkey area in general. So here we have an epauletted fruit bed. Uh, in fact, we can also see them from the track uh, we walked, but uh, albeit only in the dark. And uh, we are not the, the uh, people who uh, put a flashlight in the face of animals. So we prefer to uh, take a photo um, in the day um, when they are roosting uh, here in a, in a high, uh, palm shingle uh, covered uh, roof. Now, uh, look, the people who have arachnophobia, sorry, that went, you have to face for your fears. I, I wanted to warn you, but, <laughs> mm. well, so this is a, it is a very huge spider, easily the size of your hands, uh, very hairy, um, the king baboon spider, with a, with a cute uh, pinkish tint. We only saw it once in all these years. Uh, a very impressive uh, uh, experience, really. Another animal we see rarely is the Eastern Hinge tortoise. Uh, they are not really uh, adapted or happy with the environment we have here. We have here rocky, rocky, uh, rocky soil, uh, cast uh, geolog geology, you can say, uh, not easy to climb, not easy to move, and uh, they need so uh, sand or at least loser soil uh, to dig in their eggs, so uh, that is also a rare sighting here. And oh, last but not least, I wanted to show you a coconut crab. So that is the biggest arthropod on earth. Uh, they are also uh, categorized as vulnerable. Uh, they are nocturnal. So we were lucky to spot one uh, in the night. 
uh, they are rarely uh, seen here on Wassini. They usually stay on the uh, uninhabited islands uh, in the Indian Ocean and close by in the Marine uh, National Park. Uh, but of course, uh, they also sometimes arrive at our shores. So um, with this uh, presentation uh, of our animals uh, is drawing uh, to a close. Uh, here, uh, we are dealing with uh, the approach uh, to nature we have. Um, we believe it's, it's good to take a holistic approach to nature involving as many senses as possible. We have to get in touch on an intimate level so that we can actually feel uh, that we are all interconnected. So uh, we involve hearing. You can see here the loudest insect on our planet, uh, the African cicada, uh, but there is also smell, very important. And here's uh, the one exception uh, where we leave the animal kingdom. Uh, this mushroom was totally overgrown and we only found it through its smell. Then it's, of course, nice uh, to touch things, explore the texture of leaves, uh, tree bark, uh, the consistency of soil. Uh, with the animals, however, I'd say we humans generally uh, lack uh, the sensitivity to know where an animal's uh, boundaries are, um, uh, whether we are not possibly crossing these boundaries, creating discomfort, stress, or even worse damage, or transmitting uh, germs and, and bacteria, or vice versa for that matter. Uh, so we generally discourage uh, touching wild animals. Uh, but there's also taste. Uh, it can be in the form of tea uh, from wild herbs, or, or we show here wild plums. And uh, on Vassini, we have a coastal plant called Cypresslane. And this actually became uh, the island's signature dish. So we feel that taste can uh, complete a holistic nature experience. Yeah, now we come to iNaturalist. So iNaturalist is the app uh, we use uh, and without which it would have been extremely difficult to grasp the island's biodiversity and to assemble this presentation. Um, it's one of the world's most popular nature apps. Uh, there are of course others. Um, but here are over 69 million uh, animal observations alone for you to view, for example. So it helps us uh, identify the plants and animals, uh, get connected with uh, a large community of scientists and, and naturalists. Um, and they can help you to learn more about nature. Plus, uh, by recording, um, and sharing your observations, you create a research uh, quality data for scientists and uh, conservation measures. It's a joint initiative uh, by the uh, California Academy of Sciences and um, the National Geographical Society. So the tool is very easy to use with a simple registration process, uh, a short video clip is there, um, it's very easy to handle. Uh, we use the system to store all our nature observations from home and, and from travels. Uh, no more digging in uh, old hard drives. Uh, it's all right there uh, at your fingertips. And you can also simply create a geographically defined projects uh, like uh, the one uh, we used here uh, for this presentation. Uh, so whether you're a complete newbie or a top-notch uh, top uh, biologist, um, the system offers uh, something to everyone. 
and serves our common uh, goal of nature conservation at the same time. So Marit, uh, can you maybe display uh, the link to our Vassini biodiversity project? Uh, of course, we only saw uh, like the tip of the iceberg today and uh, possibly also the link to the community uh, uh, project uh, covering the Vassini channel uh, for the ones who are more interested in our underwater world. Now I want to shortly mention um, uh, Facebook groups and they can be very educational. Uh, I just put here some examples. We actually use a lot more because our um, scope of interest is so diverse. Um, these groups, of course, uh, rise and fall uh, with the, let's say, quality um, of the administrators and, and participating uh, members. Um, we are quite blessed here in, in uh, East Africa. Uh, we have uh, several groups where uh, gold level and silver level guides and, and experienced scientists uh, invest their time and uh, uh, share their, their, their knowledge uh, with group members. So this can be a nice uh, addition to um, iNaturalist. Oh, we made it. Thank you so much for sticking uh, until the end. Uh, I'm quite sure we exceeded a bit the usual time. So uh, thank you uh, really for your perseverance here. Uh, look, if you want to uh, ask anything or, or want to ever get in touch uh, uh, for any topic, please, uh, you're more than welcome. Um, you can contact us at wassiniguide at hotmail.com. If you ever mislay this address, uh, you, you'll also find it on our island website, uh, wassini.net. Thank you, Amina. I think you truly live on a treasure island and you've been like showing us your treasures tonight. That was really amazing. So now it's time for questions and answers. Um, you are most welcome to use the reaction tools at the bottom of the screen, or you can type your question in the chat um, if you are shy, but please feel free to, um, to, to raise your hand. We'd love to hear your questions. Um, there are quite a few comments in the chat um appreciating your talk amina a lot of people um i think are going to be visiting you very soon <laughs> That's some, good some, here. some holiday plans happening in the chat at the moment um <laughs> i also see dr tadayu there dr tadayu i just want to use the opportunity to say that we hope to see you on 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 a talk of your own unlocking nature very soon we've spoken before but that will be great as well. Um, Amina, at the moment, I'm waiting for questions to come in. So I would just like for interest sake, ask, what are you using? Are you using your cell phone? Are you using a digital camera? Um, is it something very advanced? I just want to sort of get deep the feel for people who think perhaps um, they don't have the equipment to participate in um, citizen science. Uh, so personally, uh, I'm a very old school person and uh, I, I want to also have my peace. Uh, so uh, I use still uh, such an old school phone. Uh, so I don't have a smartphone, <laughs> but I have a camera. So uh, that is my camera. It's, it's, it's uh, nothing special. So it's in the lower, lower price range. I think it was $250. Uh, that is the camera I use. Uh, Faisal uses more uh, his smartphone. Uh, that is a very cheap smartphone. Uh, sometimes he really makes nice photos with it. Uh, so yeah, no, I didn't have any expensive equipment uh, to do this presentation. Thank you. That that really shines a, a you know shows us that anybody can participate. Yeah, especially uh, the, I mean, uh, you can say all the photos I used in this presentation 
I, I dug into my archive, uh, which is iNaturalist. There I do, retrieved everything. And uh, yeah, even a simple uh, photo quality works well there uh, because there are zoom in uh, functionalities. Uh, so now you can be anyone with any cheap equipment, let's say. <laughs> Sure. I also just want to say that I live in the Renosterfeld and it's a completely new environment for me. Um, iNaturalist has been the only way for me to really find a lot of the species that I would take months or years to identify without the guidance of the experts that are on an iNaturalist. It's really a, um, a very open and available tool for any um, novice in a new environment to use and to, to yes. help you to find your way. <laughs> Yes, and even the artificial intelligence, so when you upload uh, the photo and uh, you click the field where you should enter anything, even if it's only animalia or plant, if you don't know what it is, if you click in this field, uh, the, the system, uh, uh, artificial intelligence tries to uh, suggest uh, you uh, an identification, if you don't know, you can just take it. Um, me, of course, I'm a kind of the researcher mind, so I will try to look at, at all them. Uh, uh, so before even uh, a human assists you, uh, you can actually get uh, some hints from the artificial intelligence, uh, what it could be, and then make your own research. Wonderful. Now, um Cheryl, would you like to ask your question? Where is Dr. Cheryl Ogilvy? <laughs> I'm here, load shedding, but I'm back on. <laughs> Welcome, Cheryl. But I must say, Amina, your knowledge astounds me. You are amazing. Um, I think, how many years did you say you lived on this island? It's now 13 years, huh? Well, and you must have a huge archive. That's all what I'm saying is that your knowledge just blew me away tonight. And I hope my students all took note because um, it doesn't happen overnight. It comes with years of experience. Yeah, Gerald, you know, uh, obviously I prepared myself <laughs> for this event. And uh, 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 if you get yourself help, like uh, through iNaturalist, uh, through these Facebook groups, and uh, of course you must be passionate, right? Uh, yes. But it's not that I have all the scientific names just stored there in my head. I'm also in the age where uh, things need to be repeated uh, more than twice uh, until they stick. Uh, but yeah, it's also maybe not the most important thing. Uh, for me, it's nice to have a name uh, because this allows you to start to research uh, and, and read about this animal. Uh, because obviously so many animals from corals to humpback whales to uh, warm, uh, of course, you cannot uh, observe uh, any, any, uh, any aspect of their life. So you have to read a little bit. Uh, uh, yeah. So that is more what I'm interested in is uh, what do these animals do and, and how do they connect uh, in the in the matrix matrix of life. <laughs> yeah. Well, I must say you actually showed my students a hell of a lot in say an hour and a half, and I'm sure they learned a lot. Thank you. I'm I'm very pleased to hear that. We can only spread the world. Uh, the word we 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 have to reach a critical mass of, of people who who understand and uh, how important. Uh, the environment is that we are part of the environment and uh, uh, th that we need it uh, uh, for, for our own well-being. Uh, more people have to grasp that so, so every single person who uh, gets uh, the feeling, oh, uh, that's part of me, uh, that's important, uh, I'm very happy to hear that. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Amina. Um, Clive, you're welcome to unmute and ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Good evening, Clive. 
Thanks for the talk. Uh, I work on um, giant tortoises on Aldabra at all, uh, not very far from where you are. So I wondered if anybody's done any um, archaeology looking for uh, remains of extinct tortoises, you know, fossil remains uh, in uh, your island. And um, also if there's been any geology uh, done to look at the, the age of the surface, the, the upper surface of the rocks, uh, when that uh, coral was deposited. Uh, <clears throat> look, uh, I would uh, I would need to ask around about this. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, a geologist uh, making research here uh, on the island. Uh, the only thing I know is uh, <clears throat> that uh, um, uh, in the in the in the limestone, which is between the coral stone, uh, these are uh, traditionally. Uh, we are just in the in the breaking uh, the breaking of of traditions. So there are still people who cut it by hand, mm -hmm. and some already take machines. Either way, uh, uh, when uh, these limestones are cut, um, the, these huge um, uh, clamshells, uh, the fossilized clamshells, I would say uh, larger than uh, than a meter even uh, are found, and uh, they are also then extracted a bit carefully uh, because uh, they are uh, sellable. Uh, but uh, that other uh, things uh, have been uh, found, uh, I have never heard uh, heard about it. Uh, but maybe. Uh, these things are also just overlooked. Uh, uh, so um, if you if you send me uh, a small uh, email, Clive, uh, I would be happy to uh, ask around also maybe older people who maybe remember, oh yeah, 30 years ago, there were researchers here. Uh, me, uh, I, I haven't uh, I haven't heard uh, heard of that, but it's very interesting. And I also didn't understand you in the beginning of what you are doing. The sound wasn't working properly. So I, I work on conservation of giant tortoises in the Indian Ocean. Um, oh. and, uh, they've colonized various islands over various time scales, and on a rock surface, a bit like your island, you could sometimes see fossil giant tortoises, but also fossil uh, crocodiles and um, other species. So the, the, the surface has been submerged and uh, come out of the water repeatedly. Um, yep. So uh, I, I would expect giant tortoises have reached there, but maybe, as you say, the ground's too rough for them to establish. Yeah, I, I really, I, I really uh, don't know anything about it. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, but very interesting. Mm. Doesn't mean uh, that it's not here only because uh, because I don't know it, right? No, it, it looks a good place for geologists to explore as well as naturalists. Uh, <laughs> you yeah. need a geologist. <laughs> well, you're, well, uh, you're welcome. Clive, to come and dig or however you find your things. <laughs> Very interesting. Clive, while we were talking, I've received a number of WhatsApps asking um, to secure you as a speaker. So if you don't mind, we will be in touch. <laughs> to be discussed. I, I'm a bit shy. <laughs> Well, you're doing, Clive, you're doing very well. No problem. <laughs> no, we would love to. We would love to get you on as a speaker if at all possible. It sounds very, very interesting in the research and the work you've done. And if you are a little bit shy, you just show a lot of photos, and we don't see your face. So don't worry. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Clive. Well, let's let, let's let's discuss. All right. Thanks Johan. for the suggestion. Yeah, Johan will did connect with you. Thank you. Johan, I, um, I, there was one question um, uh, from Dr. Tadio Soku, just something about the tourism potential. Uh, I know that it's a very well visited island. Um, maybe just one sentence on the tourism, and then I think we have to grow, draw to a close because we are already nearly two hours up and running. And uh, so that's from we, at the time when we start. 
Um, uh, Amina, just, in... just looking for that question quickly. There it is. Um, Dr. Tadeo's question is, how much is the tourism potential of this beautiful island? Incredible wildlife. Perhaps yeah. um, you know, if you can elaborate on that a bit. Yeah, look, uh, uh, this is not really my, my field of expertise, uh, what potential is there. Um, Uh, the, the island is is is, uh, is is highly visited as a as a day tour uh, location. So uh, people go in the national park. Uh, they car they eat their signature dish. Uh, I I mentioned uh, uh, they spend uh, maybe half an hour looking at the village and 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 then they have to go back uh, because they still have to drive back to Diani Beach or. Uh, Mombasa, any of these large hotels and where kind of mass tourism is happening. Uh, so that where, uh, that's where most uh, day tourists come uh, from. Look, um, honestly, uh, for example, uh, we have been uh, uh, much busier before COVID. We also had uh, a larger capacity uh, of houses. Um, personally, uh, if a, a certain number of, of guests is, is surpassed, look, uh, financially, uh, that is a great thing, uh, but um, personally, uh, it's not. Uh, you, you lose the contact with the people. Uh, sorry, I had to restart. And uh, uh, the tourism is then in a different, uh, very different way. Now, when people come to our place, uh, they leave uh, as, uh, as changed people. Uh, people really enjoy our place because it is so different, because it's not touristic, uh, because it's so simple, uh, so, so out of the ordinary and, and so uh, peaceful. Uh, sometimes couples come, you realize they are stressed just wait one day. Uh, usually, they will be completely chilled out, and after after three days, uh, they are really uh, very mellow. So, when too much tourism comes, uh, then uh, you risk uh, to destroy this, right? Mm. Yeah, it's it's also wonderful that you appreciate that and that you approach it in that manner. It's it it says a lot about what you value on the island. Yeah, sure. If you, uh, if I would be a person going for the big money, uh, then I wouldn't sit here. <laughs> Listen, life is really, is really uh, simple here, and it's beautiful, uh, but it's very simple. Uh, so if you are a materialistic uh, person, uh, you won't, uh, you won't be happy here. <laughs> Maybe you change. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Amina. Thank you for the honest opinion. Mm. You're welcome. Okay, Johan, it seems that we don't have any more questions, except if you have something, Johan. No, I think for now we're good. We, as you say, we've been on for more than two hours. So, um, yeah. Amina, thank you very much. We really appreciate, also appreciate the time you took to prepare and um, share your knowledge with us. Thank yeah. You. Thank Sorry, you for all, for all your support with this. Thank you.